Central angles and inscribed angles are two sorts of angles we talk about that relate to circles. Check these out. Now notice that a central angle has its center in the middle of the circle. Its end point is the center of the circle. An inscribed angle, on the other hand, has one end point on the edge of the circle and then cuts across the rest of the circle. The vertex of its angle is on the circumference. Now here are some interesting points about inscribed angles. Notice how, on this slide, all three of these inscribed angles have the same end points. They end at the same place on the circle. Their vertex is, however, in three different spots. Nonetheless, any inscribed angles which end at the same two points have the same measure. Unless, of course, they end at those points, but the vertex is on the minor arc instead of the major arc. As you can see here, the circle on the left and the right end at the same points, but they have their vertex on opposite arcs, and so they're supplementary. Another interesting property of inscribed angles is that any inscribed angle whose endpoints are a diameter is a 90 degree angle. So all three of these, because the endpoints of the angle are at the circle's diameter, measure 90 degrees. They're right angles. The central angle theorem relates angles with the same endpoints and says that an inscribed angle and a central angle, when they have the same endpoints on the edge of the circle, have this relationship. The inscribed angle is half the measure of the central angle. Let's see that in action. Here we can see very clearly the purple inscribed angle and the black central angle, which both have the same endpoints up near the top of the circle. If the inscribed angle measures x, the central angle will measure 2x. So for instance, if the central angle is 90 degrees, then the inscribed angle, the purple one, would be only 45.